All right, so you have finished Dark Dimension 3. Congratulations. Now you are faced with the daunting task that is building a team for Dark Dimension 4. Never fear. Ken is here to save the day. Today, we're going to talk about Dark Dimension 4 planning for any cheap to play or free to play players. And as you guys heard it in the beginning of this video, we're going to be talking about Dark Dimension for planning for cheap to play or free to play player. But before we move any further, if you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on that notification bell. And at the same time, I stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And the best way to know when I go live is by joining my Discord on communities that we're building there as well. So please make sure you guys check it out. Okay. And first, we're going to be talking about resource management and you're not spending in this game the number one rule that you need to live by is you need to have some patience as you start bringing up your roster but you do have the power to make sure that you are farming and spending the gold in the right way or spending your credits or spending your resources um accordingly right so we're gonna be going into the stores your first store your main store um you'll be able to find gear 14 gear 13 and gear 15 um here as well so just make sure that if you're not really buying things that you don't need in this store. I know you, we have the dailies to do, but at the same time, you know, the store refreshes a couple of times. You don't necessarily have to use the cords as well um, to do this, but make sure that you are buying anything that you need. We're going to be talking about the actual planning um, facet very, very soon. When I get into that, but before we do that, I want to showcase where you, what you should be buying in the stores. So here, um, 14 mini uniques is fine. Getting the gear 13 uniques as well is going to be a solid um, choice to buy in this store and then the gear 15 don't show up here often but whenever they do definitely make sure that you're spending um your goal on that okay and the next store we're going to talk about is the war store which by now this probably is the most desired store out of all of them there's so many things that you want out of this store you have mr sinister you have sif if you have if you haven't been able to finish your your black bolt um and you also have x23 um so many good characters, so many good characters that are valuable in the war store. But once again, if you have finished Dark Dimension 3, more than likely you already have Black Bolt. Um, more than likely you already have a decent Mr. Sinister. And if that's the case, the only other character that you should be somewhat um, farming out of this story is X-23. And the reason behind that is if you haven't unlocked Doc Ock, he is an amazing character in this game. You're not going to want to miss out on him on the next run when he, he becomes available for you to unlock him if you have him by now. So definitely only X-23 should be the only character that you should be farming out of the war store if you are planning to go into Dark Dimension 4. He is also going to probably be a really, really good legendary to use in Dark Dimension 4. So with that in mind x23 might be your only option to really farm character wise out of this store but if you already have doc Ock, then even if you have him at five stars maybe you're gonna get him to six stars on, on the next go around yes you can definitely um be pushing for a lot more but let's be honest there's a a very time crunch essential period here to you for you to get into dark dimension four and if you already have them then probably your best tap uh or best asset here is going to be any gear 15 here that's gonna show up in this store so me personally uh, i've decided that i'm okay with getting a six star doc Ock next go around and then little by little building him um and then hoping for a seven star next time go around but my focus right now is being that i'm so close to being level 80 farming gear 15 from here. so all my work credits have been going in here anytime this store refreshes as you guys can see i've already i'm kind of broke um i've been farming mainly just uh gear 15 so this one, keep it in mind. Also have to make sure that you keep in mind that you have your war orb too, the new orange gear war orb too, which is going to be the other method for you to gain some gear. You, you can gain some uniques here as well on the left column, but the center column is the one that guarantees one of uh, the regular gear. And then on the right pillar, on the right pillar is where you can get all the gear 15 that you desire. So definitely need should be holding on to this very valuable war orb um, and opening just this if you are going into dark dimension uh for any time soon make sure that you are farming out of this store and you're strictly farming uh opening this orb compared to the other orbs 
Okay, and besides the stores and your resource management that you can do from those stores, of course, you know, in the game, things will happen. Like right now, we have the battle pass that if you're free to play, you're still going to get some gear 15 from that. Of course, if you're cheap to play and you bought the battle pass for $20, it's not horrible value. It actually has pretty decent value if you're spending in this game. Uh, you know, you get the course, you get, of course, the CMO shards, but at the same time, you also get some gear 15 um, uniques from that as well. So based on that, either way, you're still going to manage to get gear 15 uniques uh, at, at some other aspect of the game. Milestones are the other way that they'll come as, as well. So make sure that you're taking care of that. And at the same time, not really spending them until you're 100% sure these are the characters that you're going to be taking into Dark Dimension Force. So for me, I'm almost done with this current milestones. The Dab Bros uh, milestones are, are almost done for me. Two days and 19 hours left. I'm at milestone 42. So I should be definitely finishing these milestones and getting all the juicy gear 15 from that. But some things that you really need to keep in mind, and I'm gonna showcase it. I'm gonna be, give a big shout out to uh, Tana actually. This infograph. Um, this is gonna help you keep in mind how many of these micro uh, uniques for tier 15 you're gonna need for those characters, right? That you're gonna want to be taking into Dark Dimension for as well. So on top of that, in addition to that, what I am using myself really bring uh, my roster up uh, and and figure out how much gear I actually need for each character is going to be this wonderful orange gear calculator created by Bondries. So big shout out to Bondries uh, for creating such an awesome tool. Um, I was able to put in all my gear, my standard gear, my T14, T15 uniques, T13 uniques as well. And then we're gonna be talking about what uh, I really want to end up doing with this at the end of the day. So whatever uh, characters you end up wanting to take into global, remember you you need at least four and no legendaries early on. You're not gonna to wanna to bring up legendaries. You're gonna to wanna to bring up global characters. And then this tool is awesome because you have the trait counter on this end right here. All these characters that I have right now listed, and even if I went to where to change Black Widow, you have one bio and one mutant one skill and one tech, which is fantastic because that means that my gear 15 is not gonna be competing too much. Let's go even more in depth and look at my roster and see what I can do. Okay, and we're gonna start by talking about my global portion of my roster. I have already favorited some of my top options that I wanna take into Dark Dimension myself, and I'm gonna be talking about the reasons behind them. So more than anything, I definitely wanted to break down the characters and split up the gear accordingly. I didn't want too much um, of one particular trait. So uh, I also wanted to look at, once again, what would be very economic or mildly economic on, on the gear that you're going to be using to bring these characters up. I didn't want to bring up anybody that, that was going to be 90 and 90 gear. It is the first part of the, of the Dark Dimension. So for that, I want to be smart about my resources. So I am really, really thinking about taking Mr. Sinister initially. He is actually cheaper than Emma anyways um, to take into Dark Dimension 4. And for that reason alone, and the fact that you can clone, sustain your team in Dark Dimension 4 with this amazing character. And I am blessed enough to have a seven red character, uh, seven red Mr. Sinister. He is gonna be my first option uh, to take into Dark Dimension 4. So. Based on that, Emma is actually a little bit more on gear for mutant gear, but if by the time I want to start that dimension for it, I have three characters built up already for it. And I managed to get enough mutant gear. I'm probably going to be bringing up my Emma because I don't plan on doing any mutant gear or any mutant characters for Cosmic notes anyway. So I should have enough um, time between uh, Cosmic and uh, City notes to start building my mutant gear for Phoenix. Based on that, Emma is going to be another top option for me to take into Dark Dimension 4. She's an amazing character, an amazing plug and play character. Part of the Emma Marauders are a pain in war defense as it is, especially a high Marauders. Then for me, Ghost is going to be pretty much the key character to take in to ensure that this really works. Um, she's technically uh, what Minerva was for Dark Dimension 2 in my eyes at least. So she's going to be very key early on to develop. Um, and she's the only tech character that I'm working on for the global notes anyways. So building up my ghost uh, and she's decently um, cheap when it comes to the gear as well. So if you're looking at tech gear, she's at 72. So not at 90. And once again, not the, not too many tech characters for global notes anyway. So I don't mind building the tech gear for her. And then Baron Simo is te technically a little bit more to bring up than Black Widow. 
Uh, but I don't care in that aspect too much. If, if I manage to get in at least three other characters and he's my fourth, I'm going to wait and see. Uh, he's definitely my top option for the skill characters or the skill gear to be going into a character. Um, and the reason behind it is he's so good all over the place. He's a good plug and play character. RTA right now is going to be a big focus for us with future um, battle passes and achieving our daily goals. Uh, he's so good in plug and play uh, teams counters for war as well. So so much bad in Baron Simo that I'm not, not going to regret it. Even if he doesn't end up being an amazing character, Dark Dimension for so. As you guys know, we're trying to plan accordingly because we are cheap to play and we don't put a lot of money into this game. So you have to be resourceful and bringing in the characters that are definitely going to get you the most value for your buck. Um, but if I really wanted to, or if for some reason it's not in the cards to take in Emma or to take in Baron Simo, and I do have Ghost and Sinister ready, and it's all about me starting Dark Dimension 4, then my other two options are going to be Captain America and Black Widow, which are very cheap on gear, and then Captain America being bio and Black Widow being skill, then I would technically have one mutant, one tech, one bio, and one to build my uh, global. Now I want to talk about my cosmic um decisions so for this i'm gonna pull up the graph so you guys can see there's some options in here that are very viable um actually dr strange is very cheap when it comes to the gear so he could be an option uh, i have him as an optional uh resource when it comes to a character that i might end up taking into dark dimension for mordo is also somewhat cheap uh when it comes to bringing up in the gear both of these guys are supernatural there's um rumors about more supernatural coming uh, characters coming down the line that might make this team even even stronger so with that in mind i wouldn't mind probably taking these characters up as well but i'm going to talk about the for sure characters that i do want to end up taking in i'm going to start with thanos thanos the fact that you know he is the reason why black order runs so good in this game one of the top meta teams in this game the top meta team um still in arena so very very valuable um anywhere in the game but even thanos on his own uh very valuable i use him in raids as well at times and i do have him at seven red stars i have him maxed out in all the t4s so for me he's gonna be one of the first five characters that i bring no matter what into dark domain so uh, I didn't bring any mystic characters on purpose to global so that i could use my my mystic gear initially on thanos so, then after that, I am thinking about taking Proxima. So with this in mind, Proxima is 72 in the gear. She's not um, the most expensive at 90, but still 72 is still a little bit on the heavier side uh, of building a skill gear. So, uh, but when it comes to the cosmic notes, your better characters are all around 72 anyway. So with that in mind, another big part of uh, the Black Order team Great on standalone battle too, good for RTA as well. And the fact that, you know, another character that can land those offense downs, at least on the cosmic notes, I think it's very key. And just an option as skill that I think I'm definitely gonna be working on. Minerva being tech um, and being Minerva, being so good in all the other Dark Dimension notes, uh, another good plug and play character in the game that's just never losing value, it seems. Um, so we're going to continue to be building her as well. The only tech character that I have in mind as well. And then from that, as I mentioned, I do have the other two options. But here's the one that I think I'm probably going to end up working on um, if I have enough uh, of the Mystic Gear as well. And that's Thor, just because once again, uh, Wave 1 Avengers has become really valuable. Um, of course, you know, as Guardians is still an option if you want to do um, war defense as well. But Thor is just such a good character. Um overall plug and play you can use him in either one of those two teams and i feel like i also need another damage dealer i'm probably gonna be end up end up going with thor but i do have some other options and if it's about just once again getting in uh i'm probably not gonna regret working on dr strange being that he's so cheap and once again maybe while i'm down the line there is more confirmation um, more super characters coming into the game so um he may end up being an option mortar is an amazing controller actually very underrated um so mortar might be a really good option not just for dark dimension but just overall rta as well um might be a good place where you can these are my options for the cosmic okay and i want to talk about my options with my roster that i think i, I want to take into dark dimension or and the reason behind them so i'm going to talk about the big bat red Carnage and the symbiotes as a whole, 
They're still an amazing team in this game. I love my team. It's more than likely I'm going to be taking all of them to gear 15 at some point in this. There's just no regret in building these guys up. They're going to be good for a long time. I'm going to be taking Carnage uh, and I'm going to be definitely taking Anti Venom. These two are my priorities when it gets time to start building my city characters. The reason why I didn't take any bio characters is Cosmic. And that's so that I can save my gift routine for this guy. So uh, make sure that you guys are not really building any bio characters for your cosmic um, so that you can definitely have an advantage by the time you get into city nodes. Um, and then aside of those two, yes, I have Scream favorite. My ideal choice would, of course, be Symbiote Spider-Man. But Symbiote Spider-Man, out of all the Symbiotes, it's the most expensive to take up to gear 15. So even though I have Scream as favorite, yes, she's probably going to be the cheapest option to take in. But by the time I get into the city notes, if I can take Symbiote Spider-Man instead of Scream, I will. If not, I'll take Scream and I won't regret it because, like I said, I'm probably going to be taking all my uh, all my Symbiotes into gear 15 at one point this game. These are going to be the main three or the main three, depending on by the time I get to the city notes, uh, what I want to build. And then for the fourth option, I'm really debating between Punisher and Merc Lieutenant. So that's why these two are favorite. They're both very cheap to take into Dark Dimension 4. So this one's scale, this one's tech. So base, by the time I get into city notes, what I have the most gear 15 for, if it's tech, then more than likely it's going to be my lieutenant, which is going to be great because I, I can do offense up on my team uh, and generate ability. But if not, Punisher is going to be part of the Skeletary team too. So there's going to be definitely more use for Punisher. I'm probably not going to end up regretting building him up and being such a cheap character to be as well. So these are my options for the city notes. All right, and now we're talking legendary. And I gotta tell you guys, I love my options for Legendary. They're all gonna be on 54 gear to take up, but I ended up choosing a Mutant in Phoenix, a Mystic in Ebony Maw, a Tech in Doctor Octopus, and then Bio Gear um, going for Invisible Woman. I think all of these guys are amazing. I think they're all still very, very valuable in the game. Reason why I'm not taking Black Bolt first, I mean, Black Bolt's probably gonna be a second run character. Black Bolt's very expensive to pick up, I believe. He's going to be pretty much almost double what these characters are going to be take up on the first run. So I'd rather take Doc Ock. I think he's going to be an amazing uh, character for the Dark Dimension for lo adding lots of survivability to this team. IW will do the same. Then I'll end up cleaning, uh, clearing buffs and uh, also adding that barrier offense down on the enemy. It's fantastic. So I'll have to you know, make sure that uh, they don't overlap with Ebony Ma, who's going to be doing the same thing. Plus adding slows and healing from Ebony Ma. I think this four are where it's at in building this legendary team. And once again, they're all different gear, so they should not compete with one another by the time I take them up. Uh, a couple of options that you can think of is Nick Fury. But once again, Blackpool and Nick Fury are both very expensive to take up. Fury is not as expensive to take up. And the same thing with Star-Lord. But I think at this point, if you're going to be building a tech character, you, wish, you might as well prioritize Doc Ock. If you don't have Doc Ock, and you don't end up unlocking him either on this next run, then yeah, then definitely go for Shuri so you can add more survivability to your team. But yeah, these are my options for the legendary. And once again, this is my guide into planning for Dark Dimension 4. I really hope you guys enjoy this video. As you guys can see, this is gonna be what I plan on taking into Dark Dimension 4. I try to make sure that when it came to the trade counter, I, I evened it out as much as possible, to be honest. And this is just with the ones that I do want to take into attention, not taking into account the alternates that I talked about in this video as well. So once again, I hope you guys found this helpful. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Drop a like. Let me know in the comments down below if you found this helpful, if there's anything that I missed, or if there's anything else that you want to see down the line um, for my channel. But thank you guys again for the support. Hope to see you guys soon. Till the next one. Peace.